Hey guys, welcome to the Gary Kasparov saga. These games are play, being played between Gary Kasparov and Deep Blue, and, and this uh, game is game 4. And uh, Gary Kasparov won, lost the first game, won the second game, and they both died for the third game. At this point of time, I would like to let you guys know that all the audio and video issues have been fixed. So thank you for one of the subscribers to, for reaching out to me and uh, getting uh, letting me know that there were some issues and now that all of the issues have been fixed I hope there are no more issues that creep up and at this time I would like to thank all my subscribers for subscribing to the channel because of you I am uh, I'm able to continue to make these videos and I greatly appreciate the support so let's just get into the game uh, Gary here has the white pieces and the deep blue has the black pieces <clears throat> Gary opens with knight to f3 and this is the ready opening. We have d5 and now d4, c6, c4 and e6 and this is the Slav defense. Knight b to d2, knight to f6 and now e3. This turns into the queen's gambit decline variation with a semi-Slav variation. We have knight b to d7 and now bishop to d3 bishop to d6 and e4 immediately trying to create some weaknesses in the center as now this is a both both the players have developed few of the minor pieces both the players are yet to castle <clears throat> but uh, in this position white black is, uh, is is black's light square bishop is kind of stuck here because it cannot really get out of this this chain and white has a lot of better development, mainly this bishop is nicely eyeing the h7 square. We have the knight that can come in, not that way, knight can come into the game via this way. Even this knight can go here to h4 whenever it needs to. This queen can come into the game, the dark square bishop can come into the game. So this is a wonderful position for you to push the pawn, so the e pawn is pushed to e4 trying to create some attacks going on in this area. The immediate threat of course is this pawn being pushed to e5 and then you will fork this bishop and this knight and uh, you will lose one of the pieces. So you have to react to it and now d takes e4, knight takes e4, knight takes e4 and now bishop takes e4. After a lot of exchanges in the central e4 square, uh, this is a completely fine position and there are no more threats. Black is fine, uh, even white is fine with a slight advantage, but usually white will have a little advantage since white is starting first. So, castles. Um, <clears throat> we have castles by deep blue. And now castles by Gary as well. Gary with a slight advantage continues the game. Um, we have h6. And this is not allowing this knight to come to this wonderful g5 square from where it controls a lot of key squares. And this also stops uh, this bishop from coming into the g5 square as well. So we have bishop to c2, retreating with the bishop. And now e5. Rook to e1, putting a rook on a nice square. And now e takes d4, we have queen takes d4 and bishop to c5, attacking the queen. Also putting your bishop on this nice diagonal which, uh, which is eyeing. Not only this king but also the f2 pawn. So currently once you move the queen, this f2 pawn will be fixed unless and until you move this queen, move the king and then you can push the pawn forward. So wonderful uh, this wonderful diagonal this for, for the black's uh, dark square bishop. We have queen to c3 <clears throat> and you guys might be wondering why not uh, immediately go queen to d3 then you will create a nice attack. But remember, this uh, this this knight can definitely come here to to f6 and then control the square. So that won't really work out, and then your uh, your queen and your bishop will be on the same diagonal. The black also has light square bishop, which will develop to f5 square and then put some pressure, and this is completely fine. So. <clears throat> Gary calculated all of this and decided to simply retreat the queen to c3. We have a5 and now a3, <clears throat> not allowing any uh, any further pushing of the pawn, especially this uh, this b pawn. 
and now knight to f6 as planned because now there is no threat of checkmate here on h7 square we have bishop to e3 <coughs> hoping to get some trades going and uh, black or deep blue decides that's fine that's what i want to do so bishop takes e3 rook takes e3 and now bishop to g4 finally developing the light square bishop and also putting some pressure on this uh, <coughs> this knight you don't really have to move the knight since it's uh, defended multiple times but it's not really a good idea to uh, keep yourself pinned so if you want to keep the knight you have to move it and that's what Gary does he plays knight to e5 rook to e8 and now rook a to e1 now Gary has a nice control over this e5 which is one of the two open files that are on the board the second open file is a d file which deep blue currently controls now you have bishop to e6 simply attacking this pawn it, you cannot immediately capture it because it's nicely protected but at least you have uh, you have the bishop <coughs> that is uh, disconnecting these two rooks by attacking the uh, by attacking the rook here and now you get f4 the next idea is to push the pawn forward because you have nice support here from the from the bishop and then you can try to create some issues on this diagonal we have queen to c8 now supporting this uh, if you push it then i'm just going to capture and if you capture then the queen is uh, ready to jump into the game and capture that uh, <coughs> this bishop as well so h3 not immediately pushing but first h3 now we have b5 putting some pressure on this pawn and uh, here a good move is definitely to just simply defend with b3 that is actually the top move but there is another move that is c5 which can also be played and then you lock this uh, this pawn chain here and you also get some good control over the the b and the d file of the sixth and the sixth rank basically a nice control <clears throat> then you can make this as an outpost for the knight as well but gary couldn't really find how to bring this knight over to the square because you also black also has a knight and it's not really that uh, you know it won't be able to contest it so once once this knight uh, you know even gets to Okay, so it's e8 square it can attack this knight and then there is no point in having a pawn here so he decides to play f5 instead and now attack the bishop but what this does is you are letting go of this uh, of this of this pawn we have bishop takes c4 knight takes c4 and now bishop take uh, the pawn from b takes c4 we have rook takes e8 with a check and now knight takes e8 rook take rook to e4 and now you're finally going after this pawn <clears throat> you could have immediately captured with uh, with this queen but you don't i mean it's it's fine i mean this is this is a completely fine move we have knight to f6 now attacking rook and we simply get rook takes c4 knight to d5 now attacking the queen and queen to e5 again keeping some pressure on this diagonal also attack, keeping some pressure on this knight here we have queen to d7 now supporting the knight and rook to g4 <clears throat> now there is a mating idea on this so this wonderful g7 square because if you play a silly move like move your queen somewhere then just queen captures g7 is checkmate so f6 <clears throat> attacking the queen so now you are forced to move the queen and you move the queen to d4 still keeping some pressure on this diagonal and putting some pressure on this knight as well king to h7 getting out of any of the threats and rook to e4 rook to d8 and this is a good time for you to pause the video and find a good move there are multiple moves that can be played in this game <clears throat> But and this is completely equal position, so it's not a challenge or it's it's not a a, a move that you have to find that will um, that will win you the game or anything. But it's just a fine continuation. So I just asked you to pause the video and try to find it.
one of the ideas I'm going to, um, I just want to tell you is moving your bishop here to d1 then going with your uh, bishop to h5 and then going to g6 giving a check controlling this nice diagonal so not that way this diagonal and uh, this is this would have been completely fine uh, there is another move that you could play you could move your rook here to <coughs> To this e6 square and then you are attacking multiple pawns at the same time and you have a wonderful rook that cannot be dislodged anytime soon so king to h1 this was a move that i did not say and this is not really uh, an engine's favorite move but it was played in the game nonetheless we have queen to c7 and the only idea that this king to h1 is not really uh, something <coughs> that a computer would play but definitely something that a human would play was because of this threat this queen now controls this wonderful diagonal and now if you uh, if you can imagine none of the pieces being here this would be uh, a checkmate your rook here on d1 would be a checkmate again imagining these two pieces are not here <coughs> so but anyways in the future once these pieces move you have to keep controlling this d1 square because this rook is nicely controlling the d5 and this queen is nicely controlling this diagonal. So we have queen to f2 <coughs> and now queen to b8. Again, keeping a nice control, making room for the knight to move if it needs to move. We have bishop to a4. Now Gary also wants to keep control of this diagonal, not allow um, any, any uh, threats of rook here to d1. And c5. We have bishop to c6. Now attacking the knight and c4. We have rook takes c4 and knight to b4. <coughs> now you can, uh, this is a wonderful position, you guys might think, this is, black is just giving up a free knight, why shouldn't we grab it? But if we grab it, here's what happens. If you capture the knight, you simply get rook here to d1. Now again, this queen is controlling the knight's diagonal. So you have to give up your uh, your queen, you move queen to g1, now you're going to get uh, rook takes g1, um, even king takes g1 and finally you eliminate uh, this pawn as well and a queen is uh, completely enough compensation against uh, a light square bishop and a rook. So this will not be easy for white to defend <coughs> and hence in this position it's not really a good idea to capture this knight. We have bishop to f3 and now knight to d3. Uh, queen to h4 and this is a move that actually gives some initiative for the computer and I would, I would request you guys to pause the video and try to find a good combination from here on for white. Not playing this move but instead some other move that you could play to continue to draw this game. This queen to h4 move doesn't really win black the game it's not really a blunder or anything it's just uh, an inaccuracy if you might if you want to call it what he should have played was queen to e2 and after knight takes b2 you play rook to c1 knight to d3 rook to d1 queen to d6 a4 and this is completely fine position again this is a drawn end game <clears throat> but after queen to h4 it's a slight initiative for black now and queen takes d2 was played queen to g3, queen takes a1, rook to c7, now again you are threatening checkmate, you have to react to this checkmate, queen to f8, rook to a7, now you are attacking the spawn, <coughs> knight to e5, and now rook takes a5, queen to f7, and rook takes e5, now, a pretty amazing move. Who would give up a rook for a knight in the end game, a knight and a pawn in the end game? At least I wouldn't, but again, that is why I'm not a grandmaster and Gary is, because what follows is f takes e5, <coughs> queen takes e5, rook to e8, and queen to f4. Now, this queen is nicely controlling this diagonal. So this king is completely safe and it, this is com this is a still a, uh, a slight advantage for uh, for black and uh, black can play queen to f6. <coughs> Here this is a slight again a slight error from the deep blue 
and what he should have played instead was king to h8. King to h2, queen to f6, g3, rook to f8, now putting some pressure on this pawn, g4, supporting the pawn, and h5. <clears throat> g takes h5, queen takes f5, queen takes f5, rook takes f5, and king to g3. This is what deep blue should have, uh, should have seen, but as we all know that computers were not really um, developed at that time, this was just a developing stage. So it made an error and played queen to f6 and this loses uh, all the initiative that it had and allows Gary to come back and draw out the game. We have bishop to h5 <coughs> h and rook to f8. Again putting some pressure but bishop to g6 with a check, king to h8 and now queen to c7, queen to d4, king to h2, we have rook to a8. Again, trying to go for some crazy ideas, but it's not really going to happen because bishop to h5. We have queen to f6, bishop to g6, rook to g8, and this was the final position on the board as both the players realized there is no progress to be made. <clears throat> and this is, uh, this is completely a drawn game. Even though as a computer right now it shows a slight advantage for black, but it's not clear how, how it's going to um, progress further. Because this queen has to constantly keep an eye on this diagonal, you cannot allow this pawn to be pushed. If this pawn is pushed then, and if you capture, then queen to h7 would be checkmate, so you cannot really allow that to happen. <clears throat> but what you could play is um, now after king to, after you move the king to g3, as white, uh, you can even uh, get a couple of uh, couple of checks. Queen to g queen to g5 with a check. You move again move queen to king to h2, and you can even have a threefold repetition and have a completely drawn game. So this is game four, and after the game four, the score line reads two each. And the next game, the game five, is a very exciting game. So stay tuned for that game because. Uh, there's a pretty interesting story behind it. That's all from this video though. And uh, that's it for me. Namaste. See you next time.